Very proud of our guys for putting the, the punctuation on a on the last game. Uh, I guess it's not the regular season, but the last Pac-12 game of the year. Uh, very difficult to beat a team twice, especially a team the caliber of Oregon. Uh, they're a heck of a, a group. They got a ton of talent, and uh, for our guys to be able to do that 13 days ago and then turn around and, and do it again, that's that's uh, uh, you know just let you know how tough those guys are. How uh, determined and the the high character level that these guys have it's been a pleasure to coach them all year long uh what we've been through this year is is uh you know it's been the most difficult year of my coaching career in many, in many respects and uh our guys and our leadership uh couldn't have done it without those guys and the leaders and the seniors and the upperclassmen who did such a great job all season long of, of persevering uh you know, our mantra after the tragedy was, you know, we're not going to get over it, but we'll get through it. And I believe our guys really did that. And uh, like I said, couldn't be more proud of them. I haven't seen the final numbers, but I know that our defense was suffocating uh, up until, you know, they got a few yards in the fourth quarter, but I think they only had like 150 yards through three, if I, if I read the board right, something like that. And uh, Cam Rising, what a what a story uh, that kid's been this year. Uh, was the second string quarterback the first three games. And uh, just persevered, prepared like he was the starter, had a great attitude. When he got his shot, he made the most of it, and the rest is history. And so uh, it's a history-making football team at Utah. We've never won the Pac-12, and so uh, proud of them for that. And uh, in the, you know, the, the convincing fashion that they did it, uh, you know, if you, if you would have told me that after three games that we're going to be here right now, I would have said you're crazy. But uh, these guys... Uh, just buckled down and what did we go nine and one I guess the rest of the way after those first three and so uh, couldn't be more proud and uh, just a, a just a, a year that's filled with so many ups and downs and and uh, Ty and Aaron you know we love those two young men and and uh, they were with us tonight I'm, I'm positive of that that they were here so questions Obviously, Devin Moore, you know, wins the MVP. Can you speak to his impact and his value for this team over the course of the season and then as well tonight? Yeah, his impact and value cannot be overstated. I mean, he is such a, a leader, such a pure talent. He could have come out last year and been a first or second round draft choice. I think he's probably played his way into the top 10 or 12 uh, in the first round now. That's that's uh, what I'm hearing. And uh, he came back and he was a man on a mission. He wanted to, to uh, win the championship. He wanted to be an All-American. Uh, he had these goals. We sat down and he told me all of his goals uh, when we had the meeting about a year ago, just uh, a little over a year ago when he was making that decision. He says, I'm coming back and here's why and here's what I want to accomplish. And he's checked every box so far. Kyle, obviously you've been in this scenario before, not the winning side, but the, you know, the Pac-12 championship. What, what do you think it was that was so different with your team this time around? It seemed like they, they just didn't let anything phase them, even with the two turnovers. Yeah, well, just that. They handled adversity all, all season long. The resiliency that they've shown, uh, they've shown all season long has been incredible. Uh, a handful of our guys were with us for those two previous championship games, 18 and 19. Uh, you know, Devin and Cove and, and uh, maybe another 10 or 12 guys. And so uh, they were not to be denied this, this time around. And they, they uh, had a big influence on the rest of the football team. And, <clears throat> and uh, really uh, the practices uh, all season long were, were outstanding, and especially when we started to get some momentum. And uh, they were, you know, they wouldn't have it any other way. This team was governed from within, and I can't say enough good things about the leadership and the, and the coaching staff. Uh, I think we got one of the best assistant coaching staffs in the country. Uh, Morgan Scally and Andy Ludwig did a great job playing off of their game plans from 13 days ago and adding some little subtle changes and some, some tweaks and some uh, modifications that really uh, complemented what we did 13 days ago, and, and it was... Uh, uh, you know, it was great to see that game plan come to fruition. Of course, it's the players who execute it, but uh, couldn't be more proud of our staff. And, and that's not only the coordinators, but all the position coaches all the way through. Kyle, you were telling us coming in, into this game that you, you guys were, were probably going to see a, a Oregon team that was a lot more, more motivated after what you guys did to them two weeks ago. Just now seeing of, of what you've done now, what what was kind of the, the difference to where you guys did this again to this Oregon team? Well, we had the same mentality and mindset and focus and that look in their eye that they had two weeks ago. And, and uh, I think in either of those games, I don't think it would have mattered who we were playing. Yeah, these guys were were uh, absolutely locked in and 
and uh, on a mission, and they were not going to be denied. And and as talented and as good a football team as Oregon is, I mean, they beat Ohio State at Ohio State. They were what third in the nation at one time, and in the, I mean, they're they're a talented crew. And uh, but our guys, you know, I guess I don't know how you can uh, say it, but uh, they were very determined, very motivated. Josh Newman, Salt Lake Tribune. Hi. I know you, Josh. You don't have to introduce yourself. Okay, the rules are rules. All right. Um, on the opening drive, you guys get stuffed on third and one. You you go on fourth and one. Mm -hmm. Cam picks it up. Was that moment important in terms of setting you know the tone that you wanted for the night? Absolutely, and we played it aggressively, and uh, you know we were and really the last eight ball games we've opted to take the ball seven or eight games in a row, and that that just is more of. Uh, that kind of mentality and that attitude, and our offense had so much confidence as the season uh, went on that uh, I, I personally thought they were going to score every possession, and and uh, they ended up. I think the second or the last seven or eight games of the year, we might have led the nation in points per possession, or at least in the top five. And uh, that really that play really set the tone, and, and we ended up scoring a touchdown on the opening drive. And and I can't remember how many fourth downs we went for tonight, two or three, but we converted. I think we converted every one of them, and so. That's a you know a credit to the offensive line too because those situations are really where you lean on your offensive line and and uh, you know get that push that you need to get the first down. <clears throat> Coach, obviously in every game you go in with a certain set of expectations and sort of set of goals in your game plan. What tonight was the most unexpected thing for you? Unexpected. Uh, I don't know if I can name one because every you know as you put the plan together and you and you uh, you know you analyze it and you you go over it and over it and over it and you 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 know try to okay you know uh, see the out or visualize the outcomes and and how each play complements and sets up another play. I I don't think there's anything offensively or defensively or special teams wise for that matter that that really was a surprise tonight. Uh, you know it went uh, very close to close to as planned. I mean, I, I don't know if there's anything that was that I could give you an answer to that uh, or an answer that was uh, something that we didn't expect. But just because you expect it doesn't mean it's going to happen. But but that's what we expected to happen. Uh, Kyle Bonnegar with ESPN. Um, obviously a very pro Utah crowd today. At what point did you realize how skewed it was going to be in your favor and would you make of the venue change overall? during warm-ups it was incredible i mean it was uh five to one is what it looked like during warm-ups and then when the game actually started it was probably still close to that four to one three to one but but uh, it was definitely a, a crowd in our favor appreciate our, our our crowd they've been awesome all year long the, the crowd at uh, rice echoes 13 days ago for that organ game was the best environment i've ever been in and, and uh, this was you know, just a great show of support from our fans. I promise you one thing, they're going to travel to the Rose Bowl. I guarantee you that. Steve Bartle, Ute Zone. I guess I'll follow the rules okay. as well. Um, yeah. You look like the guy on Ted Lasso, by the way. The, <laughs> the guy that, you know, wouldn't, yeah. There you go. There you go. There you go. Um, your tight end group, we've talked about, them, uh, talked about them a lot this season. Two weeks ago, it was Brant Keithy. Tonight, it was Dalton Kincaid mm -hmm. through the air. Just their ability to impact the game in both phases. Um, just what did that mean to your offense tonight? It's been huge for us, not only tonight, but all season long. We think that's the best trio of tight ends in the country. I, I, you'll be hard-pressed to find any team that's got three guys that uh, are as talented as those three. And... Uh, you know, like you said, Brant was uh, not as prominent tonight as Dalton, but every week it's you know all three of those guys as a as a uh, as a group always bring uh, great results, and and uh, it's an elite group. It's it's an elite group. We might lose them all; they may all turn to the NFL. If so, we wish them well. But uh, they were really the the I don't want to say the core of the offense this year, but they were they were huge, and we played so many two and three tight end sets. We probably had, we had to lead the nation in two and three tight end sets, and and it's because of their talent level. Kyle, I'm sure that the emotions right now are still new and raw, but you know, Pac-12 coaches are always trying to get to the Rose Bowl, right? That's the goal. Um, does it feel like you've gotten to the pinnacle as a as a Pac-12 head coach right now? Well. Uh, certainly a great feeling, and it's something we've been working towards for a long time. We've been in the league, what, 10 years now, 11 years, and it's been a process. And we got in the league, uh, we knew we were going to have to, you know, have some things uh, improve, uh, you know, our roster. We, we had to, to uh, 
the, the perimeter, the skilled players. We knew we were a little behind there, uh, facilities, budget, but we've just been working away at it ever since we joined the league. And uh, this is the culmination of a lot of years of hard work and effort, not only by us, by our administration, by everybody involved. It takes a lot of people to make this thing go.